Welcome to Vintage Variety. Today I'm going to go antiquing in beautiful Statham, Georgia, and I'm going to take you guys along with me. Established in 1892, Statham, Georgia is a small town located right outside of Athens. Before the pandemic, this town had a lot of antique stores. Today we will only be visiting two as many of them have closed. We'll be visiting Modern South Interiors and Antiques, along with Antiques and more. This is Modern South Interiors and Antiques. You can probably tell that this store is aimed a little bit more towards home decor. I really like how they've done all of these different settings throughout the store. And what they've done is they've mixed new items with things that would have came from an estate, vintage items and some antique items. So it's a really beautiful store just to walk through. They do have a jewelry case. I did not film that. I only purchased one thing out of their case. Most of what was in the case were higher end pieces of jewelry that didn't really fit in my budget very much. But I did find one item and I will share that with you guys at the end of the content. I pretty much liked everything I saw in this store. Very beautiful pieces of furniture. The exception would be this piece here. To me, this doesn't just look worn, it looks dirty. So don't think that's something that I would really want to own. We've seen just about everything here. Now we're going to head over to Antiques and More and see what we can discover. This antique store is kind of typical for antique stores in my area where I live. It's kind of a mesh of different things. Some of the things are collectibles, some of them are vintage, and some of them are antique. They have a much larger selection of jewelry in this antique store with different price ranges, so hopefully I will be able to find something that fits in my budget. One thing that I'm always cautious about when I visit stores like this you noticed that the one display had the 20% off. Often, if you're not careful, you're probably paying about the same price for some of that stuff unless it's a booth that's going to go out of business. What they do is they mark the items up and then say that they're 20% off. So you don't always save money when you're looking through booths like that. That isn't always the case, but with that particular little section, I felt like that was the case. The items were really overpriced compared to prices I had seen on items at other stores. Spotted some more jewelry on this side of the store. I'm gonna step over here and take a look at some of these pieces. You never know, I may find something that I simply can't live without. My cousin recently gifted me with some Blue Willow cups identical to these, so I wanted to get a really good look at them so I can tell her how much they were at this store. I'm back at home and I'm excited to share the items that I purchased on this antiquing trip today. I'm going to start with the item that I purchased from the first store I went into. This is the only piece that I bought at that first store. They had a large display counter where their cash register was with quite a bit of jewelry. A lot of it was estate jewelry. Most of it was a little out of my price range. And my friend actually found this piece. They had a large tray of what was listed as charms. And this was in it. Now this could very well be a charm, but to me this looks more like a small necklace pendant. I'm not sure how clear that's coming in. There's the marking on it, 925. I also tested this piece. A lot of times you'll run across pieces that are marked as being sterling or they'll be marked 925. And when you test them, you find out that they're not really sterling. That's not the case with this piece. This is real amber and it is real sterling. I think this would look really pretty on a silver chain or even a torque. The last antique store that we visited, Antiques and More, I felt like they had a much better selection of vintage jewelry, and I felt like the price ranges were a little bit more affordable. They had higher end items and lower end items, so there was something to fit into everyone's budget. So let's take a look at some of the great items I got at this antique store. This is one of the first things that I picked up. 
I picked it up, put it down, and ended up going back to it. Most of you probably already know that I collect milk glass. It's not something that I continuously collect a lot of. Every so often, I'll run across a piece that is unusual or it's something I don't have and I want to add to my collection. And that's why I picked this up. I think I paid about three or four dollars for it. And this is a cute little milk glass hat. So that's what it looks like turned over. It's meant to look like a hat. I thought this was really cute. I wanted to add it to my collection of milk glass because I didn't have anything like this. On this trip, I didn't really buy a lot of jewelry. I saw a lot of pieces that I could have purchased, but I was really trying to lean towards buying pieces that weren't similar to pieces that I already owned. When I saw this in the case, I really liked the look of it. It had a very Art Deco look. It almost looks like one of those old-fashioned belt buckles, but it's actually a brooch. It's in excellent condition. You can see it has all of these rhinestones set around it. This is the back side, and I wanted to show you guys how well made this piece of jewelry is. You can see that each rhinestone is individually set into this brooch. This was something I saw. It's I don't really have anything that's similar to it, and I thought this would be a good piece to add to my collection of vintage and antique jewelry. The next piece that I picked up was this beautiful Monet brooch. I don't have a lot of pieces of their jewelry that has the white enameling on it. I do have quite an extensive collection of Monet jewelry. And I saw this, the price was right, and it was something that I wanted to add to that collection. There's the Monet marking on the back of this piece. I really liked the look of this piece. I thought it was really pretty. It's unsigned. The cameo itself is just a plastic, even though it looks kind of like a resin. These were probably my luckiest find of the day. Both pairs of these earrings are set in sterling and they are both turquoise. The smaller pair are pierced and they really have that ballet style look to them. And the larger pair are clip-ons. There's the back of the smaller pair. They're only marked 925. And this is the back of the larger clip-on pair. They're marked Thailand 925. A lot of the vintage jewelry that came out of Thailand was really good quality. Not the same kind of stuff that you run across today. So I felt like that I found a really good deal in these. I have a little bit of a patina on them around the edges. I don't know if I'm going to keep them that way or clean them up. A lot of people like for their jewelry to have a little bit of a patina on them. Let me know what you think in the comments. Should I clean them up or leave them the way that they are? These are the last two pieces that I'm gonna show you guys today. The bracelet is unsigned. The necklace is a Les Bernard. This is a beautifully done gold chain. There's the cartouche on it. It's Smart Les Bernard Inc. Give you guys a good look at the bracelet. Isn't this beautiful? This bracelet is done in Lucite and it has a gold chain encased inside of it. I think these two pieces look absolutely beautiful together and I will most likely wear them together. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to share these items with me. If you haven't already, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on more content about collecting vintage and antique items. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.